Beyond. Uh, we have been looking at D&D Beyond. We have a, a series of videos on, on Nerd Out where I've been discussing various aspects of D&D Beyond. And today we're going to take a look at creating your own custom monsters. So starting with the D&D Beyond website, if you go to Monsters and hover over, you can see they have a Vishal, they have Homebrew, and they have Create. So we're not looking for an official monster here. Uh, I'm not looking for other people's home, Homebrew monsters. I'm looking to create something new. So we're going to click on Create. One of the good things about creating a homebrew monster using D&D Beyond is you can go through and actually choose a previous monster um, and you can choose a monster and then copy it and then just make edits how you want to do. So let's say you're going to make, as you can see, I have some homebrewed, uh, I put an at symbol in front of my homebrew creature so they come toward, towards the top. Um, I have some home some goblins here that were not in D&D Beyond 4. These are actually... Uh, monsters that I got from a book from Nord Games. So if you are looking to create a monster, we'll go with goblins again because goblins are very popular. So if we do a search for goblin, you see all the goblin things come up and I'm just going to choose goblin. And now I'm going to create a monster based off of the goblin. I could also choose a monster type and filter this way. If I wanted to choose dragons, this would filter by all the dragons. So there are multiple ways to go about uh, doing that. I'm going to choose all, and again, I'm, we're going to go with Goblin because everybody loves Goblins. No, not really. I'm being sarcastic. Um, you can also create from from scratch. So creating from a template. Um, so here, here we go. We have copy of Goblin. Uh, you can go here. You can rename him into, we're going to say he's a Goblin Alchemist. Uh, and maybe he's a, you know, a little Goblin and we're not going to do a lot of changes to, to Goblin. Um, we're just going to do, he's still a humanoid, still a goblinoid, uh, still small. He's not a swarm, still neutral evil. Uh, actually, you know what, maybe, maybe this guy's chaotic evil. Maybe the alchemist is like one of those crazy mad scientist types, and he's just a little nuts. So he doesn't follow anything except chaos and just wants to cause problems everywhere. Will make his challenge rating stay the same because uh, really I'm doing a very minor change here. I'm not going to do a really big change. You can do much more of a change, but we're gonna, we'll just do a small change here. But as you see, you can you can add new special traits if you wanted to. Um, you know, like the goblins have nim nimble escape. Uh, you know, the kobolds have like the pack tactics and that sort of thing. So you could put some more things here. So we can create a trait here and we can format it just like other ways of formatting that wizards and other people use. So we're going to go with um, accurate thrower. We'll call these guys an accurate thrower. Put the period in just like you see above and we'll say the goblin alchemist gains advantage on ranged attacks with Alchemist fire, alchemist fire, if the throw is made within 20 feet. So we'll just say for the heck of it, uh, that's what we're doing. We can bold, we can italicize it just like above you see up there. And now bam, another point to this too, you may want to change this up here to say goblin alchemist. Um, oops, misspelled. Uh, as you can see, it does actually underline and stuff if you do mis misspell things like a good word processor does. Um, so there you go, Goblin Alchemist can take, you know, that, this, this. So there we go. If he if he's within 20 feet and he's throwing his Alchemist Fire, we will uh, give him advantage on that throw. Uh, a little note here, let's go up and open up equipment because I don't remember off the top of my head alchemist fire what the statistics are on it so if we look up alchemist fire flask again what this is good for um, oh and see we see here this is a good a good point this is why I looked it up you can only throw the flask up to 20 feet to start with so that obviously makes no no sense so if we go back order our goblin we will change this to be alchemist alch alch thrower within 10 feet so if he's within 10 feet and he throws throws the fire, he has advantage. We'll make a couple small changes. I'm going to get rid of the scimitar. 
I'm going to say these guys use daggers. They're, you know, little tiny guys that all they really are here for is to stabby stabby with a, with a dagger or throw their fire. Um, and, you know, obviously a dagger does 1d4. Uh, we'll keep everything else the same so we don't have to deal with the two hit bonuses and such. Although if you are making up a monster, it is pretty easy to determine what their hit bonuses are. Uh, you could look in the books. I'm sure it's in there. Um, I just kind of look at, let's see, um, you know, his dexterity bonus is a 14. So his dexterity bonus is 14, which is a plus 2. So he's plus 4 to hit, so his proficiency bonus must be, must be plus 2. And you can look at things like their skills. If you look down here under skills, his stealth has a value of 4. His dexterity bonus is plus 2. So yes, his proficiency bonus must be a plus 2. You know, there are possibilities they could have expertise or something in a skill. So I kind of like to look a couple different areas just to make sure um, that I know it if I'm editing it. So in this case, I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to let him stay with his plus four to hit with his with his dagger um, using his dex bonus. We know daggers do piercing damage, not slashing. So I'll change this to piercing. Um, he's going to get rid of the short, the short bow. So we're going to change this to alchemist. And again, I misspelled, so Alchemist Fire, uh, ranged weapon attack, plus 4 to hit, range is 20, so we'll just go with 20 feet. And now let's take a look at Alchemist Fire, uh, range attack on this creature object, treating Alchemist Fire as an improvised weapon, so therefore he shouldn't have proficiency in it, that because he is a um, Alchemist Fire wielder, that he not that he has proficiency in it. They've used it for a long time. They they know what they're doing. So on a hit, uh, the target takes one d4 fire damage at the start of each of its turns. A creature can end this damage by using its action to make a DC the ten dexterity check to extinct to extinguish the flames. So I'm gonna take some of this and I'm gonna copy it. Another great feature of D&D Beyond. If you need to you know copy and paste to uh, a character sheet or anything else, you can easily copy it and paste it. I like to do this a lot if I'm having an email conversation or a text conversation with somebody um, and we're talking about rules or something and we need, you know, official language, you can just copy paste it. So over here, we'll say that um, he's a plus four to hit because he's, he's proficient as we already discussed. Um, Oh, let's take a quick look here. It's alchemists, plural. So I want to be kind of accurate here. So instead of alchemist fire, we'll make it alchemists fire. I'm going to say on hit does one point of fire damage. And, and then we'll edit that right over there. Target takes 1d4 fire damage to start of each of its turns. Creature can end its damage by using its action to make a DC 10 dexterity check to extinguish the flames. Um, I, I don't like the idea of uh, not doing any sort of damage at all with it. You know, we'll say that the one point of fire damage um, is, you know, from like the initial fire. Um, you could even maybe argue one point of piercing damage, maybe from some glass, which actually that might even be better. So why don't we change that? We'll say it does one point of piercing damage from the glass hitting and breaking and the little shards of glass hitting the person. Um, and then the target takes 1d4 fire damage at the start of each of its turns, and a creature can end this damage by using its action to make a DC 10 dexterity check to extinguish the flames. So that's the top part. And then you go down here. You know, obviously, if you have more stuff to put in, you can put reactions in if they have, like, a reaction or legendary actions if it happens to be a legendary creature. Uh, I think you have to click. I think it's down on the bottom. There's a is legendary or something. Right there. So there it says is legendary. So if you click this, now all of a sudden this is active up here, as you, as, as you see. So we're, he's obviously it's just a regular goblin alchemist. He's not in a, he's not a legendary goblin. Um, so we're not going to have that. Reactions. If you want to put reactions in, you know, characteristics, descriptions of like the monster. Again, it's just a goblin that I'm already copying, so I'm not going to do anything there. Here's where you can edit things. Um, it if you don't ever edit creatures or create your own monsters um, I would suggest doing minor tweaks to the things at first you know things like you know maybe change the dexterity score up or down a little bit and by doing that do appropriately what you would do with a character so if I were to change the dexterity to a 16 well now all of a sudden okay what do I know is affected by de dexterity um, I know that you know uh, my armor class is going to change 
uh, it's going to go up or down, in this case up. Uh, my attack bonus, if I'm using a light weapon like a dagger, is going to go up, or a ranged weapon like my alchemist fire is going to going to go up. You know, stealth, my skill down here would would go up because I'm changing the dexterity bonus. I'm not actually going to change it here. But that's how I suggest that you do it. Also, looking at monsters and doing this exact thing first, I find really helps you learn about creating monsters. Because something I didn't realize for a while, creatures based on their size have different hit dice. So small creatures have a die 6, for instance. Medium creatures have a die 8. Large have a die 10, but, you know, and more and more. So if you take a look at different monsters as you're creating them or editing them in this case like I'm doing, you'll start to see those kind of patterns, and, and you'll learn. Um, I don't remember where it is in the books. It may be probably in the, the Dungeon Master's Guide under like, creating a monster from scratch, um, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, you can go, you can change saving throw proficiencies. You can do damage adjustments, condition immunities. You can choose different environments for your monsters. Override languages if, if you want to um, for things that are not in the list down here. So like only languages in, in, in new in life, for instance. Uh, if you have a, mon a standard language you want it to speak, you can just go down here and you can look here. You can delete these. Um, you could add a language. If you click add a, uh, here, here's a perfect example. Uh, if you see, changes may not be saved. You don't want to leave this yet. So I hit cancel. Before you leave this top section, you want to save. I've made that mistake a couple times, so just remember to do that. But you can add a language. You can add senses if they, you know, dark vision if they don't have dark vision, or you know, you know, it's you know any of the other visions or sights you can add in here. Um, you can add skills, uh, and you can add movement. So here's all your options for little parts that you can add to to the top, um, and that's basically it. Um, and so that's how you edit a creature that's already been. Uh, created. Um, so we're going to skip out of this. I'm not going to save anything. And we're going to go to create from scratch. Creating from scratch, as you see, looks very similar to copying one. Um, you see they give you all sorts of nice little things here. Some uh, example formatting of like, you know, melee, we melee weapon attack, ranged weapon attack. It's good to have the formatting so it stays consistent. Uh, so you have all that there. Same thing with reactions and legendary actions and those sort of, sort of things. This is all strictly done by hand. So, you know, you could come up with some really wonky, crazy stuff here if you really wanted to. Um, and the bonus to that is you can do whatever you want. The disadvantage to that is you may not remember some things. Like I said, editing a goblin, I remembered that, you know, my hip die was die six because they were small. You know, you can make a tiny creature which I believe are die fours, but you can even die die twelves just because you wanted to reach up lots of lots of hit points and you didn't realize that there's already kind of a mechanic in place to help to help you with that. So personally for me, uh, I use this sparingly. I don't use create a monster from scratch very often, if ever. Um, I prefer to just grab another monster, edit it, even if I change a ton about it. Uh, I sometimes just go to let's like let's go to monsters. We'll go to create. Um, and I'll just, you know, know like roughly the, you know, the CR of a, of, of a monster that I want. So let's say actually, um, let's say I go to a monster here. I'll go to an official monster. And I just, I'm not really sure, but I want to create a monster that's CR4. So I'll choose challenge rating 4 to 4. I'll filter my monsters. And I'll be like, okay, so something that maybe is close you know, to like what I want, like maybe it's a, maybe it's just a beast, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm I'm looking to create a beast, so I look at elephant. Okay, so elephant's a, a CR4 creature. So now let's go create a monster. Let's choose my elephant. Create, and now here I can create a beast that is CR4, and I can change anything I want. But I can at least keep some things kind of close, uh, like it has die twelve hit points because it's a big creature. Um, but that's something I may I might share a huge creature actually not big big is actually a size. So we'll, so we'll go with huge. Um, so maybe I want it to be huge. Although remember, if you do change its size, you should change its hit dice. So as you see here, you know it's got eight die twelve hit, hit dice. So I may want 
to keep that similar with my new creature. Um, you know, beast it has an intelligence of three, so I'm going to say my creature, you know, whatever the creature is, it's got roughly an intelligence of three. You know, and very similar things. Um, so it just kind of helps you decide how to do your creature. Uh, you know, you can keep the you know the two hit bonuses pretty much the same, you know, depending on what creature you're making and how much damage it does. Um, roughly the same because again if it's a level four or a cr4 creature you know it should be doing roughly this much damage there are rules in the dmg that help you with that um, so i tend to like when i create new monsters to just grab a cr of a creature that i already you know know it's kind of similar maybe um, and i grab that and then i use that as a template to create my new creature so that's the basis um, of how to create a new monster. Uh, I hope this has helped you. Uh, I, I know that uh, it took me a little while to figure out how to do it and do it accurately and well without things becoming you know, a little broken or skewed, but uh, hopefully this will help you uh, on your journey and you can not make a few of the mistakes that I made the first time I did it.